Today we're going to do an awesome algebra and trig review. So it's all the stuff that's super useful for this class, but you might have forgotten it. The first thing is composition of functions. It's when you have one function inside of another function. It'll look like this in symbols, and the way you read it is f of g of x. Now there are two things. There's an inside function, and there's an outside function. So let's take a look at an example. If you have f of x is 3x squared plus 4, find f of x plus h. Notice how there's something inside of that function f. That's a composition of functions. So here's how you do it. f of x plus h just means plug in x plus h everywhere you see an x. So that's what we did. And then you simplify it by foiling everything out, and then distributing the 3, and then there you have it. There's your answer. Next are some useful algebraic manipulations. So, you may have seen square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half, and cube root of x is x to the 1 third. These you should have memorized, they come up all the time. But also, 1 over x is x to the negative 1 power. Now there's a general rule for these. So if you have the nth root of x to some power, let's call that power m, you can rewrite that as x to the m over n. So let's put this into an example. I want you to rewrite this. Well, I'll do it for you. So using that last property, fourth root of x cubed is x to the 3 fourths power. But now when you have 1 over x to something, it just becomes negative power. Natural logs and logs are also some useful functions and there are some properties that come in handy. The first one is when you have log of something to a power. That power can come live out in front of the log like this. Another one is when you have log of two things multiplied together. That becomes log of the first thing plus log of the second thing. So let's take a look at an example. Log of xy squared. So that 2 is going to come live out in front. And then by that second property, you have log of x times y. So you're going to be able to split that up into addition. Now we're going to talk about finding equations of lines. This is insanely useful. So I have a picture of a line here, and I have two points that I've chosen on that line. Those two points are negative 1, 1, and 3, 2. So we list points x, comma, y, and since there are two points, I labeled them x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now the first thing we need to find is what's called the slope for a line. And the slope is rise over run, so if you count the blocks here, it goes from the first point you go over 4 and up 1. So that means your rise is 1 and your run is 4, so the slope is 1 fourth. But it's not always going to be this easy. It's nice to have a formula for slope. So this is the formula. If you have two points, you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the x1 and y1, x2 and y2 are listed in the picture. And so you just plug them into this formula, and you verify that you get 1 fourth. Now that's just the slope. We need to find the equation of the line. So what we're going to use is what's called point slope form, which is what you see here. So the m is the slope, which we already found and x1 and y1 are the numbers from the first point. When you plug those in, this is how it looks. Now this isn't usually how you see a line, so if you simplify this a little bit, there we go, that looks like a line. Next we have everybody's favorite fractions. So these are rational functions, which is when you have basically a fraction but with x's in it. So let's see how we could solve something like this. Solve a fraction equal to zero. We're going to clear the denominators, so multiply both sides by that denominator. 
cancels out, that's nice. And then zero times anything is zero, so it stays zero. So three x plus one equals zero. Notice this is just the top part. The top part equal to zero, you can solve that. X is negative one third, super easy. So now here's another one I want you to try. This one's a little harder. Solve three over x plus one minus one over x equals zero. So one thing you can do is you can move the 1 over x to the other side and then cross multiply. If you want to try that, that's definitely good to do. The other thing you can do is clear the denominators again. So what you're going to do is multiply both sides by whatever's in the denominator. Just x plus 1 is in the denominator, so multiply everything by that. And there's an x, so multiply everything by that too. So I'm going to write out what this looks like when you multiply by the denominators called the LCD, the least common denominator. Now we have fractions multiplied by things that aren't fractions. But things that aren't fractions really are fractions. They're just divided by 1. So you can cancel out some stuff, simplify, and then solve. The next thing we've got is factoring. Factoring is an insanely useful tool when we're looking to solve an equation equal to zero. So for the, the process that I'm going to show you, you need the equation to be equal to zero. So if you have something like this, x squared minus x equals six, and you're trying to solve this for x, you got to move that six over to make it equal to zero. Now you factor it. And the nice thing about this, when you have something factored equal to zero, you just have to look when each of the factors individually is equal to zero. So the first one is equal to zero when x is three, and the second one is equal to zero when x is negative two. Okay, let's solve this. It might look a little more challenging than the last one, but all we need to do is factor it. So. We've got two terms here separated by the minus sign, and we want to see what they have in common, common factors, and factor them out. So they both have at least an x squared, and they both have an e to the x. So you can factor that out, and then in parentheses here is what remains. So the first one, there's a 5 left over, and the second one, there's an x left over. Now, when you're looking for something that's factored equal to 0, just look when the factors are 0. So x squared is 0 when x is 0. e to the x is never equal to 0. 5 minus x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 5. So you just combine those, and your answer is going to be 0 and 5. Now I want to do a little bit of trig review. So you might have seen this thing called a unit circle. Now, it's just a circle. It's nothing fancy. Um, but on that circle, if you pick a point there's an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate associated with that. Now, these functions sine and cosine are just the x and the y-coordinates of that point. That's it. Cosine of theta is the x and sine of theta is the y. Now there are some other functions that we talk about with these. There's tangent of theta, which is just sine over cosine. So if sine is y and cosine is x, tangent is just the y over the x. There's also secant of theta, which is 1 over cosine, or 1 over x. Cosecant of theta, which is 1 over sine, or 1 over y. And then cotangent, which is 1 over tangent, or cosine over sine, or x over y. Now, <clears throat> there are a bunch of trig values that you need to know. For example, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and sine of pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2. Now, if you just know the cosine and sine values and the formulas on the right of the screen, you can plug in these numbers into the formulas that I have given you and figure out what all the different values are. Like tangent, secant, cosecant, you can find them out just by knowing cosine and sine. So let's do one last example. Find tangent of theta if cosine of theta is 3 over 4 and sine of theta is less than 0. What we want to use here, you've probably seen it before, is SOHCAHTOA. So you're going to draw a little right triangle and label one of the angles as theta. And now we have numbers, 
but the numbers are only for cosine of theta. So if you go to the ka in Sokotoa, it means cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that 3 is the adjacent, and the 4 is the hypotenuse of this triangle. Now we need to figure out that other side, so use the Pythagorean theorem and plug your numbers in, and you get square root of 5 for that side. Now if we're looking for tangent in this Soka Toa, tangent is the Toa part, so that means opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is square root of 5, the opposite over the adjacent 3. But that's not exactly right. So we have this other piece of information that says sine of theta is less than zero. So if tangent is sine over cosine, which we know from the previous slide, cosine is positive three over four, and sine is negative, then that means tangent has to be negative. So you just have to change that square root five over three to negative square root five over three.